Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, we're continuing the series where I'm going from Earth out to Jupiter with the eventual goal of landing on Io. And as you can see here, we'll be taking the Aero Freighter on this mission, but we won't be landing the Aero Freighter on Io. I'm going to actually take off an XR2 uh, from KSC, which I have on Earth and I'll rendezvous that with the Aero Freighter and dock the XR2 up with the Aero Freighter and then the Aero Freighter will carry um, itself plus the XR2 out to Jupiter get into orbit around Io and then we'll detach the XR2 from the Aero Freighter and land the XR2 on on Io. I think that'll make for a really fun mission and uh, once again, I just feel compelled to say that the XR, uh, rather the Aero Freighter is not available for Orbiter 2016. I'm just using a beta version. I, I really feel the need to say that with each video because otherwise somebody's going to see part four without having seen part one and two. And um, where can I get it? You can't get it, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully it will be available for general availability uh, whenever Dan Steff gets uh, done with his updates. Uh, but I have no idea when that'll be. Uh, maybe go to his website and send him a message and just see how things are coming along. Um, all right, so with all that said, let's go ahead and switch uh, camera views. And let's get inside the XR, uh, the XR2. So we'll apply. And graphics are loading, so just give that a second. Orbiter's never been a speed demon when it comes to graphical rendering. But, uh, so I placed the, uh, the XR2 on the runway at KSC. Actually, technically, I created it and placed it on the landing pad. But I showed how to use the scenario editor to move it over to the runway. Um, when I created it, it used the default skin. So in between videos, I edited the scenario file, did a couple of small tweaks. I changed the skin because I really like this Umbrella Corporation skin. And I moved the... Um, I moved it to the other end of the runway just because this side just looks better. So let's jump inside the XR2. Uh, one other thing I did was I switched from orbiter sound to XR sound because I noticed in the previous video that the sound was not working in the XR2. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to manage that for this mission because the, there's some sounds in the Aero Freighter that don't work with XR sound. Uh, but generally sounds do work. Otherwise, there's just some cabin sounds and stuff. So I might actually just leave XR sound on because it generally works for everything. So so with all that said, let's uh, take a look here. So we're going to rendezvous with the Aero Freighter. So essentially, this is, uh, this is just like going to the ISS. So let's, uh, set, let's set up that plan to go to the ISS, but instead of the ISS we're going to the Aero Freighter. So let's select a line plane and target the Aero Freighter. Now one thing that just occurred to me, I have no idea if I can actually reach the Aero Freighter from KSC because depending on, well let's find out. Um, it looks like maybe because sometimes, you know, like if you're trying to get to me, Space Station Mir um, or the ISS, depending on which launch site you're at, you actually sometimes you can't reach that particular uh, that particular space station. But hopefully that won't be a problem here. Uh, we have ways around it if it does present an issue. So let's go orbit plane, and it looks like the plane of the Aero Freighter gets really close to our location, so it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, now let me think here. So let me make sure I have external cooling turned on, and I do. Now we only have 14 days of locks in the XR2. Do we need to worry about that? Um, Probably not, because when we go to the... I mean, it's only going to take us a few hours to get to the Aero Freighter. And then when we're at the Aero Freighter, we're, going, we're not going to need any locks at all for a couple of years. And then when we detach from the Aero Freighter and land on Io, we're only going to need a few hours. 
and then depending on how long we stay out on the ground. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this is fine. I'm gonna say that's fine. And likewise with fuel, we probably don't need to carry any extra fuel because we're just uh, going to the aero freighter. We can refuel from the aero freighter, and then and and then once we're uh, let me just to be on the safe side. Let me carry an extra fuel module in the XR2 because I don't quite know how expensive the uh, the IO maneuvers are going to be. I think we'll be fine, but let's just err on the side of caution. Uh, crew habitat module. Uh, I mean we're we're going to be in the uh, aero freighter 99.99999 percent of this mission, but I guess. I guess while the crew is uh, doing their IO stuff, we can give them, we can give them the uh, the crew habitat module. So let's select the CRM or CHM rather, put that in one, and that just gives you know more space, sleeping quarters and whatnot. And because I don't quite know what my fuel requirements are going to be, and I'm not going to go through a big fuel calculation. I'm just going to give myself an extra main fuel just to be on, you know, uh, err on the side of caution. And let's see, do I could, I mean, as long as I'm filling up the XR2, I could give myself a LOX module or another fuel. Mm, I don't think LOX is going to do us any, I don't think it's going to benefit us at all. Uh, you know what? Let's just, let's just get fuel. So that's going to be our loadout. So we're done. Turn on the APU. Close up the doors. Turn off the APU. So our loadout for the XR2 is uh, a couple of extra fuel and the crew habitat module. All right, so we have external cooling on and let's go ahead and just make sure everything's topped up. Lock, lock, refueling system, locks, ape, scrap, main fuel tank, refueling system, locks, resupply systems, okay. offline. And I did all that while 10 time warp was on just to make sure all that stuff, all the animations and whatnot went quickly. So that's our loadout for the XR2. So we're all squared away there. Now let's look at, uh, again, so we're looking at a line plane. <clears throat> I don't know what my lowest inclination is going to be. Um... Looks like we might have a fairly high inclination to the to the aero freighter. Hopefully, it won't be too bad. Um, is there anything else I need to think of while I'm doing this part? I don't think so. Uh, we have a day to get up into orbit, so let's warp time forward. So the inc the rate's coming down. So this will be coming down, and let's just see how low we get. Looks like it'll be reasonable. Okay, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty decent. We won't have a huge plane change. All right, so I'm gonna go back to uh, real time for a moment while the rate is still coming down and just kind of get everything else set up. So we'll get orbit MFD set up. We'll go projection, uh, projection ship. And okay, this was already set up correctly. And I guess another thing we can do while I'm thinking about it is we can set up our communications with the aero freighter. So com nav, and we want vessel, aero is already selected. The long range is, is it this one, 108? I think so. So it's already selected, so that's good. Now we have uh, different docking ports. Why don't we have frequencies for any of our docking ports? Interesting. Um, arrow. Why don't we have frequencies for any of our docking ports? Am I missing it? Okay, so that's a problem, but that is a problem we'll deal with later, I guess. I'll have to like edit the scenario files or see why I'm missing frequencies. Maybe they're not set up <clears throat> in the configuration file for some reason. But yeah, usually you have the long range. 
And the fact that that's 108 makes me wonder. Um, let me see here. What is what is Azure? I don't know what Azure is. Yeah, usually, yeah, usually we'd have frequencies. Um, I don't know. I'm not seeing it, so I'll. I will. Uh, I'll figure this out later and let you know what 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 the deal was. Um, so we have orbit. All right. All right. So let me just do this um, because that frequency thing is bugging me a little bit. Let me just warp time forward until it's right at the time to do the launch, and we'll we'll take off. We'll fly at a. Let me see, what is my launch heading going to be? That's the other thing I should, I, I need to know. And I don't have that here with this MFD. Launch MFD will tell me, which I don't have loaded right now. So I was not as prepared for this part of the mission as I should have been. So let's, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's just make this a short video because I got a couple things I want to figure out. And I, I don't, because I don't actually know what my launch heading for the... Uh, for the aerofreighter freighter is going to be I can figure it out uh, with a calculation but I don't have that here in front of me and and I can figure it out with um, launch MFD but I don't have launch MFD loaded so I'll have to uh, bring that back up in the modules and then figure out um, what the what the docking port stuff is is with the with the aerofreighter. so so we'll cut this we'll call this a short video and we're pretty close to the time to launch so let me just do a control s here to save and let's switch camera views there we go and when we come back we'll uh, we'll figure out our launch heading and we'll we'll fly up to orbit and and we probably won't get docked with the aero freighter in the next video but we'll at least get up into orbit so with all that said i will see you in the next part